Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of On the Mark. Finally. Finally! I have decided to get, to get this thing started up. I've been wanting to do my own sort of podcast thing for a while. Over the last year or two, I've become a big fan of listening to wrestling podcasts, and specifically, I love the Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show, and I love Wrestling Soup, and there's a couple others that I'll listen to every now and then, those two being basically the main ones. I love the um, analysis portions and stuff. I love hearing Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle talk about, you know, they analyze things and they give their opinion and everything. I love that for them. And, of course, Wrestling Soup, you get... Uh, Missionary Anthony. And of course, Wrestling Soup with uh, Missionary Thomas and uh, uh, Joey Numbus. Uh, I love. Uh, they're, they're hilarious. Uh, I love them. Uh, so I, I just kind of want to do my own thing. I, I know I follow a lot of guys on Twitter. I know we, we have a lot of similar interests. And strangely enough, we also love wrestling. So I just kind of want to do something. Just to get my own, you know, just like everybody else does. When everybody wants to give their opinion, that's what I want to do. So this is what this show is. And maybe this show will evolve into where I can bring other people in and have a debate going, you know, or just discuss things, you know. This this is going to be completely wrestling related. And if we go off on a tangent on something else, then it's probably going to be related to this. But I'm going to try to keep this strictly wrestling. So with that said... Let's jump right into it, and it's a big, it's an exciting time in wrestling, especially if you love the WWE. Uh, a lot of things have happened, and you know, it, what we're two weeks into the new year, and it's just so much has happened in the last two weeks. It's crazy. Uh, first of all, John Cena is injured; he's out for because uh, I think the estimation was six to nine months. Uh, his shoulder, I believe. A horrible, horrible timing. And just nothing good about that. He had, I mean, just coming back from two months gone. And they were already, you know, frantic over that. And he comes back and it, when his first week back, out. It, it's crazy. And, and Cena is just added to the list of guys who are already injured and out. Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan still hasn't been cleared. Uh, Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and there's just so many. And Nikki Bella even. Just and then rumors of uh, people like um, uh, Paige supposedly being out with a concussion, and uh, crap, I blanked out for a second. Sasha Banks supposedly has some kind of minor injury, and even now Rusev has some kind of minor injury that. People can't seem to figure out whether it's real or not, although there's a picture that I saw earlier today uh, floating around Twitter, I guess, of them, uh, their show in India. Rusev is wearing a knee brace, and he does not wear knee, bra uh, knee braces, so he might be hurt. He might have some kind of minor injury, and they may he may just be trying to work through that, but uh, these injuries are crazy. They're piling up, and it's it's kind of scary. It really is. Just think about how many top guys are out right now. Oh yeah, uh, Sin Cara. I forgot about Sin Cara. Uh, it's just crazy. Of course, the picture going around uh, when Cena got hurt was, you know, everybody who left WrestleMania 31 with a title is injured. Cesaro and Kid were the tag team champions. They're both out. Nikki Bella was the uh, Divas champion. She's out. U.S. champion Cena won that night. He's out. Intercontinental champion Brian. He's still out. And of course, world heavyweight champion Rollins. He's out. So, it's crazy. The injuries have got to stop. And I don't know what else. I've seen people throw out the idea, you know, just, just get rid of house shows. Or cut back on house shows. And I suppose that could, you know, or at least... I don't know, because they already split the roster. I'm sure not everybody, I mean, 
uh, the house show I went to last year, um, I was really hoping people like um, Dean Ambrose would show up. He was not there. The only former S.H.I.E.L.D. member that was there was Rollins, and the main event was a cage match between him and Orton, which was a good match. I, I, the, the, which live event was great, but um, I was really hoping to see Ambrose would just come out with the world title just to taunt Rollins, but that didn't happen. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? So, I guess we can roll right into that with, well, I, I'm, I'm going to try to go in order, I got it. But um, but with that, with all these guys hurt, you know, somebody's going to have to step up. And right now, that has been Roman Reigns, who is the reigning World Heavyweight Champion. This was something that's been built up for the last two years. Ever, I would say ever since he was the last man eliminated in, not the last Royal Rumble, which he won, but the year before, where the final two were him and Batista, where Batista won. So, so in... um. 2014, Roman was the last guy eliminated. 2015, Reigns wins. And now this year, the Royal Rumble is going to be one versus all. Or or if you want to call it the Roman Rumble. Because this, this Royal Rumble is about Roman. And for the first time, for the second time ever, the championship is on the line in the Royal Rumble. In the actual Royal Rumble match. For the very first time, though, the champion is going to have to defend it in the Rumble. So I, I'm getting, I'm giving WWE credit here for doing this, for bringing, for make one with how lackluster the Rumble results have been in the last few years. Um, I can't even remember who won the one before. I mean, people booed Roman out of the building last year, uh, and Batista. Nobody was willing to accept him, I think, because everybody thought. You know, everybody wanted Daniel Bryan to be the guy to win the Rumble and to uh, go to the title. And, uh, and then, you know, Batista just walks back into the company and says, Oh, uh, I'm going to be in the Rumble and I'm going to win it. And I'm going to go to WrestleMania. And that's what happened and people didn't like it. I still think, I mean, I know people, I've heard some discussions about, you know, why did the fans turn on Batista? Well, the, the fans wanted Daniel Bryan. That's what happened. So, I mean... You wanted Daniel Bryan, you got Batista. I don't think it was Batista's fault, but that's just what they were doing, and, and, and they they really should have done better with that. But uh, of course, this year you know there's going to be all kinds of things. The one thing that I did not like about this past Monday night was the tease that Heyman suggested that Lesnar did not need to be in the Royal Rumble, that Brock Lesnar did not need to compete for the title in the Royal Rumble, but the winner of the Rumble should be given the the prestigious opportunity to face Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania. And we're like, we're doing this backwards? So so the winner of the Rumble just has to face the most unstoppable guy in the whole company. Okay, you know, and, and I'm not saying it would be a bad idea to have whoever wins the tournament, or uh, wins the Rumble, face Lesnar. But the, the idea, the logic behind that, that here's a, here's a guy whose gimmick is he loves to hurt people. He said that a thousand times on Raw. I love to hurt people. I'm a fighter. I'm a prize fighter. And I just like to hurt people. But then he's given the opportunity to be in a match where it's pretty much he's just got to beat the crap out of everybody until he can throw him out of the ring. Why would you not want him in that? Plus the title's on the line. He can go to the Rumble. I mean, he's the beast incarnate. He, the, the the one behind the one in 21 and all that crap that no longer matters. But, I mean, the point is, Lesnar should have been chomping at the bit to get into the Rumble. Like, 29 other guys? I'll run through them all and I'll leave as champion. I mean, that would have made sense to me. Although, the only thing I could figure is they were just teasing that. They were just sort of, I think everybody was hoping Lesnar would be in the Rumble. And they kind of teased people with that, saying, no, Lesnar's not going to be in the Rumble. But then he showed up, and now he is in the Rumble. So I, I think this was definitely something that had to happen. There was no way that Lesnar could not be in the Rumble. If he was going to be involved in the pay-per-view at all, in the event, in any way, he had to be in the Rumble. Because at least with Lesnar in the Rumble, it is not 100% certain that Roman Reigns is going to retain that title. Excuse me, uh... 
I still feel like the, the the most likely outcome is that Reigns retains and goes on to WrestleMania as the defending champion. I hope not. Uh, but one of the things that I was teasing here, but I feel could be a strong outcome for this, is Triple H makes a surprise return as the uh, as a late entrant in the Rumble, maybe even number thirty. And through some screw job, maybe with Lesnar's help or with somebody else's help, or Vince could come out there and distract Roman or whatever, uh, Triple H ends up winning the Rumble and becomes the champion. Reigns through till uh, he he stays the champion through till WrestleMania, and the main event of Mania is the champion Triple H, the COO of the company. You know he's married to the boss's wife. <laughs> I screwed that up, didn't I? He's married to the boss's daughter, and he's going to have her and Vince in his corner against, you know, the, the is it, what do they call him, the big dog against Reigns. I, I think that's something that people would want to see. It, it makes sense, I think, in a storytelling, you know, way. And I think maybe it would help people get over with Roman a little bit more. Because the the entire we're screwing you over thing constantly, it seems to be working, even though I think it's way too obvious. And I think the constant portrayal of Roman Reigns, he's a big guy who's run through people before, and they just want to keep putting him in this underdog position. I, I don't like that, because it's the same thing they did with John Cena, where they would have Cena face five or six guys at once, and Cena would win. And uh, Cena always finds a way, and I'm like, well, it's written like that, no duh. Is it really a surprise? Who cares? But anyway, that's what I think. I, I think it would be a good way because I don't really, un I don't really know who else could win. You got the three right there: uh, Reigns, Lesnar, and Triple H. I think those are the only three that actually have a legitimate chance to win. Uh, a shame that they didn't follow through with at least making Bray Wyatt appear as a credible threat in the Rumble. But considering that the entire Wyatt family is going to be in the Rumble. You know, that's four guys wrestling on behalf of one. You know, so essentially, I mean, the, the, the Harper, Rowan, and Strowman are going to be wrestling for Bray. And they started off pretty good with that, where there was a match between, between Ryback and the Big Show, both of them in the Rumble. And then before the match could even really get started, out comes the Wyatts. They beat the crap out of Ryback. And then they just beat the crap out of the Big Show. I said, that's what they need to do. And I was so happy with that. I said, that's exactly what the Wyatt family needs to be. They need to show up when you least expect it and beat the crap out of people just because they can. Because they're a force to be reckoned with. They're dangerous. They're unpredictable. They're scary. That's what they need to be. That's what they need to do. And they don't do that. What happened this past Monday on Raw? They were facing the social outcasts. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm glad that they're at least using these guys for something, even though it sucks and it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it, it just, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is Heath Slater's second job squad. I mean, the, the, remember 3MB? That didn't last long. Two of those guys aren't even with the company anymore. And, and this is just a group that, that just got thrown together because they don't know what to do with them. They don't have enough... I guess they don't have enough airtime in three hours and 15 minutes to uh, make use of everybody. But, uh, it, it's crazy. The Wyatts should be a, a dominant force in this company. You got th four monsters. They look scary. They look dominant. They, I mean, I, I love the little feud they had with Team ECW. I thought that was a great feud in the match on Raw that kind of ended it. The big uh, four-on-four Extreme Rules match was awesome because all four of the guys on that in that match looked all four, all eight of the guys in the match looked looked strong. I mean, that's what you want in a wrestling match. You want even the losers to look like you know they went out there and they fought a battle. You don't want to have your guy lose in a way that makes people go, oh, well, he sucked. I mean, the match. I mean, the whole thing. I was questioning the match on the, just the other day on SmackDown where it was the Dudleys and Harper and Rowan in a table match, and they won just by pushing Harper off the top rope, and he fell through a table. I didn't like that, but then 
uh, Strowman attacked, and Harper and Rowan uh, got back up after they kind of dusted themselves off and put the Dudleys through the table. I mean, that kind of made up for it, but still, they lost again. So, they just need to be booked better. I, I don't know why they don't give Harper and Rowan the, uh, the tag team titles. I mean, other than uh, other than the fact that you would have a heel team versus a heel team, uh, but I've seen some rumors thrown around out there about the Wyatts, about how Bray Wyatt could be turning face. Maybe I think that maybe should be wishful thinking. I think that would work because people want to cheer this guy because he he's such a unique character and people want to get behind him, but they know nothing's gonna come from it because they've seen the the way he he got buried by Cena and got buried by the Undertaker and Kane. I mean, there's people want to cheer Bray Wyatt. They want to cheer the creativity that you know, or the the. They want to cheer this idea, this gimmick, of Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family, but they're just they're just not having. A, they don't have a reason to. That's that's what it is. But um, you know, hopefully they'll figure out something there. But speaking before we leave the Royal Rumble. Discussion, something else to tie into that. WWE, apparently, uh, I'm guessing, I don't guess they've actually announced it yet. They've they've been teasing it and discussing it like crazy. Although, apparently, all the uh, reports are is that the deals are either being made or are finalized. But, uh, got some New Japan guys coming in. Uh, and I hope I remember all their names right. You got AJ Styles, of course, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Carl Anderson, I believe is his name, and uh, Doc Gallows, I think that was his name, coming in as, or what everyone's hoping is, as the Bullet Club. And it surprised me that WWE is actually using the Bullet Club name. I guess this they can just use it if they want to on social media. Um, you know, it's just a hashtag. Um... Supposedly, they're trying to get the rights to the name Bullet Club, and that way they don't have to use Balor Club. I'm not sure how, what I'm not sure how I feel about that. I guess as long as they're basically doing the same thing as they're kind of these anti heroes, I guess you could say. I'm not familiar enough with the Bullet Club to know whether they're heels or faces, so that's I don't really know. But but if you think about it this way, the tag team division has gotten abysmal again. All the tag teams are hurt. The uh, primetime players aren't together anymore because Darren Young couldn't hang with uh, Titus O'Neil. And now Titus O'Neil is sort of getting a push as a singles guy. Uh, the Lucha Dragons are, you know, Sin Cara's out. So Kalisto's getting a, well, he, he was getting a uh, singles push, but it lasted a day, which I'll get into in a minute. But the WWE doesn't have many tag teams right now. They got the Dudleys. But I don't think they're going to be winning the titles. And they just feuded with the New Day. So the New Day needs somebody to feud with. The Usos aren't going to take the titles from the New Day. At least I hope not. Because the Usos aren't that interesting. I like the Usos. I like what they do. But after a while, they just get old. And I thought that it was a complete farce. And just laughable that they won the Tag Team of the Year in the Slammies. Because for most of last year, I can't remember which of the Usos it was that was injured. But one of them was out, and the other one was barely on TV. He would come out and do some commentary every now and then, but... Oh, it, it was awful. I'm sitting there going, How is it possible that a tag team that has not been on TV in months won tag team of the year? And the only, thing, the only reason there is is that they're the only ones you can give it to. You can't give tag team of the year as voted for on by the fans the New Day because they're bad guys. Which is stupid. But I, I, I don't believe the Slammies in any way, shape, or form is legit. I, I, I don't believe that. They may let you vote. But I, I can almost guarantee... I, 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 just, I just... In my stomach, I feel like it's complete farce. But uh, moving away from that. Uh, the Bullet Club. I'm, I'm excited for them. Rumor is AJ Styles is going to debut in the Royal Rumble match. That would be pretty big. Now, whether the other two guys are going to show up with him or not, probably not. Uh, I was expecting them to go straight to NXT, all of these guys. 
rather than uh, WWE TV, but you know they kind of need it. They kind of need some more people on Raw. So it, it would at least make uh, at least make Raw interesting. And uh, before we and before we go on, one more guy coming from New Japan, Shinsuke Nakamura. Now I'm not super familiar with Nakamura, but I did see a match or two of his on uh, Ring of Honor on Destination America where he came in, and I like the guy. He's got a lot of charisma. Uh, he's really fun to watch. And I, I saw from the crowd reaction when he came out that people like this guy, and, and he's really popular. And so it doesn't surprise me that they would go after him. The one thing that I'm scared of is that when he if he goes to Raw, that WWE Creative is going to ruin him. Because he's a Japanese wrestler. And, and I'm trying to remember any Japanese wrestler in the past whose gimmick wasn't basically, you know, around the fact that he's a, a Japanese guy. I think the only one I can remember is Jimmy Wang Yang, although that was kind of a joke. Oh, I'm an Asian cowboy. Uh, don't do that. Nakamura, I, I, earlier today, I was like, I need to see more of this guy. I watched, uh, I think, the Wrestle Kingdom match he had with AJ Styles, which was a great match, and a uh, Ring of Honor match between him and Kevin Owens, with, of course, at that time, Kevin Steen. Uh, both great matches. And I like the guy a lot. Hopefully, they'll see, you know, this guy, he's over because of what he is and what he does. You can't change him. That's what I'm hoping they'll think. And supposedly, rumor is that they have, that WWE has licensed the theme song that he uses as his entrance music in New Japan for him to use in the WWE, which I hope is true because I remember seeing some, uh, I saw a couple of people hoping that Jushin Thunder Liger would get to keep his theme that he's used for years and years outside of, you know, like outside of places like WCW. Uh, but he didn't, uh, and then when he appeared in the NXT, that he got, I guess, some kind of, I guess, stock music, or maybe they actually made him a theme, but. But uh, if he does come out to his theme song, which I like uh, Nakamura's theme song a lot, then maybe that means he's going to be taken seriously. And that's all I hope for all these guys coming in. If they won't be just used as, you know, just, just extras. I mean, it's an exciting time. Utilize them. Make them have a real impact when they debut. You know, uh, like who, who could... The Bullet Club can come in as sort of the anti-heroes, you know. It would give, you know, it would give somebody a new, fresh challenge to the New Day. Because I don't think that anybody in the, there's no team in the company that can face the New Day in terms of just that the fans really like as far as collectively. Except the Wyatts, but then again you got heel versus heel. If the Bullet Club comes in as, uh, as, uh, you know, the anti-hero baby faces, then... There's your feud right there. And I think that's a pretty strong feud. The New Day versus the Bullet Club. I think that would work very well. Or vice versa. You know, you could hate the Bullet Club versus the Wyatt family. You know, a bunch of Smash Mouth guys versus these crazy guys out of the swamp. I mean, it, it, it would work. So there's a lot of different things they could do with these guys. And, and Nakamura could at least, you know... I could see Nakamura if they take him seriously and let him be himself. Possibly get in a U.S. championship run. Maybe get an Intercontinental championship run. But at least make those titles seem a little bit, you know, keep them from going stale. AJ Styles, too. I mean, you take AJ Styles and Nakamura and throw them in there with the likes of, you know, Neville and Kevin Owens and um, Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler. You have all these guys who could put on great matches with two more guys coming in that could put in, you know, have great matches, too. So there's a lot of win win situations there but they've got to be taken uh so the next thing i want to talk about though is whatever happened or whatever you want to call that happened on raw between Callisto and Alberto Del Rio i don't get it i, I the only way i'll get this is if this turns into a big feud that results in Kalisto just completely destroying Alberto Del Rio because there was no reason for him to win the championship on Raw Monday night 
and then turn around and lose it Tuesday night for the Thursday recording on for, of SmackDown. In which, it really doesn't make any sense, is that at some point during the match, Wade Barrett came down there and helped uh, Del Rio retain. Barrett hasn't been on TV in weeks. I mean, what is this? The League of Nations is, is barely... They barely exist. Even on Raw, I don't think they... This past week, they didn't even mention the League of Nations. Because it, it barely... It's not even a real faction, to be honest with you. It's just not. You saw how Sheamus came out on Raw by himself. So, so for for Kalisto to win that, which I thought was a great moment, I thought it was a great moment for Kalisto and his chance to you know have his guy you know his tag team partner's hurt, he can't be in the tag team anymore. So you know he's really good. Fans seem to really like him. He and let's see, and I don't think he cut he pretty good on a promo. So I thought it was great to give this guy a chance, and then they took it away from him immediately after to give it back to a guy who has no charisma. There's something about Alberto Del Rio that does not work in the WWE. It just doesn't. He, he just comes out, and I mean, he, he's, he's aggressive and everything, but he also doesn't look like he's having fun. On Lucha Underground, he looked like he was having fun, he was doing well, and he just seemed to just be more into it. But in the WWE, he's not. But, uh, like I said, I, I hope Kalisto gets the title back. Um, and hopefully the next time he wins the title, the commentators on the match, hopefully it'll be on SmackDown, and hopefully the commentators won't uh, completely ruin his credibility as a champion by talking about how unbelievable it is that he won. Like, like Hornswoggle just pinned the great Kali. I mean, it's ridiculous. Michael Cole actually said, and I think this might also, this may be even word for word, possibly, he said, Kalisto is proving that miracles do happen tonight. I'm like, what? He's like, you're basically saying there's no way on the face of the earth this guy should have been able to win. Why would you do that to a guy who's, who's won a baby face and two, you know, he just won the championship? I mean, it's, that was awful. I mean, I can maybe understand JBL doing it because he's supposed to be a heel commentator, but Michael Cole? Byron Saxton? Which Byron Saxton doesn't need to be on that, uh, be at that table anyway. But there was no reason at all for Michael Cole to stress how impossible this was for him. And then to, when he did win, express how shocked he was. He might as well have just said, oh, there's no way this should have happened. awful. Truly, truly awful. But like I said, hopefully the next time uh, Kalisto wins the title, it's on SmackDown. And Mauro Ranallo can call it. Because uh, for their rematch, he did a pretty good job. Uh, which is going to be, I think this will be the last topic I cover tonight. Mauro Ranallo, or I think that's how you pronounce the name. Mauro Ranallo, maybe? However you pronounce his name, I like this guy. Uh, the, I, I missed it myself when I was watching SmackDown, but uh, I saw the uh, tweets coming in. Very first thing he said on the broadcast when uh, Jerry Lawler introduced him was, The boyhood dream has come true. And, you know, I was like, you know, that is a very good sign. This is a guy who likes, who loves wrestling. He, he's going to know his stuff. And he's made calls. He's already dubbed, uh, which I'm surprised nobody did before, but the fact that he did it on his first night, you know, just proves that this is a guy who, who's watching. He knows what to say. He knows what to do. He uh, dubbed Dean Ambrose's comeback uh, clothesline the Lunatic Lariat. I cannot believe somebody hadn't thought of that before. Because, one, it just sounds good. You know, it's not, you know... I don't know if I would say it's the most creative name of all time for a move, but it really does work for what it is. And the fact that he just it just just came right there. Lunatic Lariat. I'm like, oh, that's good. 
why didn't anybody else think of that? You know, it's one of those simple things that you stop and scratch your head and wonder, how did nobody else before me or before this guy here today consider that? So, and I like, he, he gets really into the matches. He, he screams and yells. You know, it's certainly a lot better than when Michael Cole sits back. And I know people make fun of it all the time, but it's so funny. Is whenever Michael Cole wants to act surprised or, oh my! I mean, it just, it's awful. It's like the time Kane's music hit, and it was like 10 seconds before Kane came out. And she's like, who could it, like, he was like, surprised, could it be? I'm like, it's Kane. I think it is! It's Kane, Cole. There he is! What's his name, Cole? Just say it! It's Kane! Wow, I had no idea it was going to be Kane. Thanks, thanks, Maggle. You really called it there, Maggle. But, uh... uh that's awful. But, uh, Marvel and all, I like this guy a lot. Uh, he sounds a bit to me like when I first heard him. I said, "He sounds like Mean Gene Okerlund." Like, but uh, I, I like, I like. He's got a great voice. He sounds good. Uh, Jerry Lawler is now. Uh, he was teasing a little bit, I think, uh, last week, but this week he was full heel commentator, and his his bad jokes are better when he's a heel. I know they're still bad. But they're, they just seem funnier when he's a heel. But um, I, I, I honestly think right now that SmackDown has the better uh, commentary team. Certainly better than the JBL uh, and Cole, for sure. I don't know why Byron Saxon is on both shows as a commentator. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they need a third guy out there. Cause By Byron kind of just serves the echo. I mean, for whatever the the babyface commentator says, and he kind of, I guess it's he's supposed to be sort of a play-by-play -play guy and sort of a color commentator, sort of fitting in there. I'm a little bit of both, but uh, you don't need that. I mean, it's, it's, I think my favorite commentary team that I've heard in wrestling is uh, Jerry Lawler and J uh, Jim Ross. I liked Michael Cole and Taz, but uh. I always loved the dynamic between uh, Lawler and, and Ross. It was, it was great. They always had great commentary. And, of course, Jim Ross is probably the best announcement, announcer ever. So, so I have high hopes for SmackDown. I never thought I would say that, but I actually look forward to watching SmackDown now. And, I've no, and, and, and it just goes to show you that commentators can ruin a match. I can't remember which match it was. But it, it may have been a, the, the, the New Day versus the Usos from Raw. I think that was the match. I'm not even sure if that was a match on Raw. But there was a match on Raw that, that JBL and Cole spent the entire match talking about the Royal Rumble. Not who was wrestling who. I mean, that just that kind of stuff annoys me. Is When you've got guys wrestling here, and instead of calling the match and occasionally referencing something else that's happening that may involve these guys, you know, what, what if the New Day wins the Royal Rumble? Hmm, you know, I wonder if they'll all three be the champions. And then go back to the action in the ring, they'll spend 10, 15 minutes talking about it. It's awful. But, uh, uh Mauro Ranallo, I mean, he, he, he calls, uh, he's referenced things never before in WWE history can have I can I remember anybody referencing Alberto Del Rio's MMA background, and 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 that was such a great thing to do, and I don't know why they've never done that before. So I hope. And one of the guys that I follow on Twitter said, you know, that's one of the things I am scared about this new guy coming in, is that they're going to change him because they're going to make him want to do commentary more like Michael Cole or more in line of what WWE wants commentator uh, commentary to sound like. And all I've seen on Twitter, and plus I followed the guy after Sma that first SmackDown he, he did, is just constant positive about how he called the matches. And I'm hoping that, that Vince and whoever makes the call there decides that we cannot change this guy. They like how different he is. They like what he's doing. There's no reason to change it. 
But then again, you know, Vince does what Vince wants, Vince gets. And that's one of the problems with the company right now. It's because the last 10 years, John Cena has sat on top of the mountain and there's no other star now. Cena and the only other stars, the <laughs> Cena and Orton, the two big stars, I guess you could say, in the company are out. The uh, upcoming guy, Rollins, is gone. And the, uh, the underdog guy, dog, the underdog guy who got over all on his own, Daniel Bryan, is out. So they don't have anybody. But, um, but, uh, I, I definitely think SmackDown is going to be worth watching now. So if you haven't been watching SmackDown, watch it now because the commentary as it is now makes the matches feel so much more important and so much more like something interesting is happening rather than Cole and JBL plugging a pay-per-view or some other part of the show during a match and then basically giving the impression that this match isn't important. We should talk about Roman Reigns. So hopefully that's, hopefully, you know, SmackDown's ratings will improve and hopefully nothing will happen in terms of, you know, hopefully they don't change uh, Mauro Ranallo's, uh style of commentary. And, uh, crap, I forgot there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Two more things, maybe. Real, real quick, uh, because I did not write this down. I like the current feud between Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. I think Becky Lynch needs to win the Divas Championship. And I think she needs to throw the Divas Championship in the garbage and bring back the Women's Championship. Or, you know, a new version of the Women's Championship. Give it a new design. Get rid of that freaking butterfly belt. Oh, for God's sake, get rid of the butterfly belt. I'm so sick of seeing it. And I absolutely hate hearing talk of Total Divas. I refuse to watch Total Divas. One, because it's a fake reality show. And on top of that, it's a fake reality show about fake wrestling. It can't be good. And then the uh, the segment I, I uh, heard them talking about on Wrestling Soup, uh, where Nikki Bella sits down with John Cena and she just... Dolph Ziggler came up to me at work and he wants to give me marriage and babies. And Cena just sits there and smiles. He says, uh, well, I guess this is about to get interesting. Oh, shut up! Shut up, Cena. I mean, how would you, how would a normal guy react to, you know, hearing that some guy who knows she's taken, is coming and begging for her to come back and saying, oh, I'll give you everything that he won't give you. One, it's not believable, because I don't believe anybody would want Nikki Bella, at least in the way that Dolph Ziggler seems to, where he's infatuated with her, and he's got to have her. I love you. I can't live without you. You know, I can't believe anybody's like that. just can't. Oh. Anybody remember the Slammies when she came out to accept her Slammy and she was wearing the transparent dress? And she's a baby face? I thought the Big Show was bad on his face and heel turns. But at least when he did turn, he kind of stayed consistent for at least a few weeks. I mean, one week the Bellas are heels getting booed. Or, well, I wouldn't say they get booed because the crowd still cheers for them either way. Nikki Bella could come out and uh, punt a a helpless puppy into the crowd and she'd still get cheered because, oh, it's Nikki Bella! I thought Brie Bella was a baby face until uh, SmackDown, I think it was the other day, and she started uh, taunting Becky because uh, she yelled at the crowd, You want Becky? And then kicked her in the stomach. So I'm like, they don't even know what they're doing anymore. They have nothing for B- uh, Brie Bella either. It's ridiculous. They see no value in Brie Bella, which I don't completely, you know, want to say there's value in Brie Bella. But I, I don't find the Bellas that interesting anyway. But uh, I-, I I just find it funny that just there's just nothing for Brie without Nikki. We can't do anything with Team Bella unless Nikki's here. But yeah, Nikki came out at the the Slammies in the transparent dress. You could see right through it. You could see her bra and her panties. And I was like, oh, oh, this is awful. And she's coming out here as a baby face and and trying to sound inspirational. Like, oh, I was 
I want to thank everybody who helped me, and this means so much to me. This is for all of you. And I'm like, look at yourself. Look what you're wearing. I thought it was hilarious, honestly. Hilariously bad, but I was laughing. I'm like, I can't believe she showed up at this award show, whether it's fake or not, in in a in a in a see-through dress. It's a stick. I, I don't wish injury on anybody, but I'm glad that the Bellas I'm glad that Nikki's not on TV right now. So, the, kind of the same with Cena. I, and like I said, I don't want these guys to get hurt. I wish they would just kind of go away. You know, Nikki, you know, she had her record-breaking reign. Just let her go away for a little while. Let her take a break. She's already making money off her TV show. I mean, that's basically what Total Divas is, is the, the, the Nikki Bella show. So, whatever. Oh, one more thing, and then I'll wrap this up. Uh, WrestleMania. Sting coming in. Good things there. I think Sting deserves to be in the uh, Hall of Fame, by the way. Uh, very kind of a shame that the crowd on Raw, when they announced it, kind of was like, eh, okay, Sting. I should have deserved better. But the big question is now, who is The Undertaker going to face? Will The Undertaker face anybody? My personal opinion on that is, the Undertaker doesn't need to wrestle anymore. Uh, the rumor was going around that two big headliners for this year's Hall of Fame will be Sting and The Undertaker. Because of course, because it's in Texas, a hometown boy, WrestleMania is right there in his backyard. And it, I think it would make a lot of sense. They did the big 25 years The Undertaker thing where he squashed the Wyatt family. Uh, I, I, I don't want, I honestly don't want to see The Undertaker wrestle again. And not because I don't like The Undertaker. Or not that I don't think he could put on at least a good match. But I just don't know who who would he face. He doesn't need to face the Wyatt family anymore. They, they've been damaged enough to the point where I think people just don't care anymore. Because they know they're not going to do anything with the Wyatts now. So, uh, in my opinion, he doesn't need to face the Wyatts. Uh, Sting is a no-go. Sting is probably done with his career. Uh... I do fault Sting a little bit for that, for deciding to take the uh, turnbuckle power bombs. That was a bad call on whoever decided that, and Sting, and, and, and you gotta blame Sting for saying, okay, I'll do it. 57 years old, you wanna do that crap? I mean, I don't wish anybody to get hurt doing this stuff, but he not only did he do that, but he took a backdrop off the announce, uh, onto the announce table. I mean, you're trying too hard, man. I know you wanna go out there. And and uh, supposedly he said, you know, Seth Rollins is the best worker I've ever worked with. And I know he was really, I guess his point in this match was he was wanting to make Rollins look, just look like gold. But the problem was the booking already screwed Rollins up. Uh, because, you know, just previously, Rollins had wrestled a complete match with John Cena in which he lost. So... And then immediately afterwards, he's got to face Sting for the world title, but he wins. So that was a completely stupid uh, uh, just end of the night. To where, okay, you just fought the most unbeatable guy in the world and lost. Now you got to face somebody who hasn't wrestled yet. Who's supposed to still be good, even though he's 57 years old. He's fresh. You just wrestled uh, Superman. Now you got to... Uh, Beat this guy. Uh, well, he did. It didn't make sense to me. So Sting's not going to be able to do the, the the big dream match between Sting and the Undertaker. So who is left? There's nobody. They could possibly dig somebody up. I mean, well, uh, suppose I heard earlier that there could be some talks with Bill Goldberg. I heard that from uh, Jim Ross and Steve Austin on one of their recent podcasts. And uh, Bill Goldberg apparently wants to do something. I haven't seen anything about that. I mean, whether it's WrestleMania, whether it's even with the WWE. But, um, a, a Bill Goldberg versus The Undertaker. You know? Could be. Maybe. But I don't think The Undertaker matches matter anymore. Now that the, the, the streak is gone, and how the very first match after the streak ended, people have forgotten about. Nobody remembers that The Undertaker wrestled Bray Wyatt the, the next year. Nobody. 
He didn't even appear in the whole feud until WrestleMania to WrestleBrain. So, you know, it's it, it just, there's nobody there. There's no reason to have The Undertaker wrestle at WrestleMania. And if he does get inducted, great, he deserves it. He, he's probably the one guy on the whole planet that deserves it more than anybody else. You know, let the guy retire. If he wants to come out and do some kind of segment where he, you know, ends up and say Bo Dallas comes out there and says, you don't feel so bad, Undertaker. You just gotta believe. And, and then he tombstones him. Do something like that. Something like when, uh, who was it? Somebody came out, Carlito, or, no, it was, uh, uh, I can't remember who it was had come out, but Muhammad Hassan and Davari had come out, and were doing, were attacking somebody, and then Hogan came out, you know, had big returned, at from, I guess he'd been gone a while, big return, he was, I think that was the year he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. He came out at WrestleMania, you know, did the whole punch punch thing to the uh, to Muhammad Hassan, and it was just a good uh, feel good moment more or less. But he can do something like that. He doesn't have to wrestle, and then he can uh, be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and he can retire. He deserves it. He he completely deserves it. Let the guy go out on top. That way, I mean, he doesn't have to wrestle a match. He doesn't have to risk injuring himself. At 50 years old, right now, like Sting does, Sting's got to have uh, neck surgery. There's no reason to risk his health now. I mean, yes, he's a huge draw, but he can't wrestle every year, forever. John's like just like John Cena can't be the champion forever. You got to move on, which is why I wish they would have done the big match between Undertaker and Kane versus the Wyatt family in a way that would have had the Wyatts win without Bray Wyatt calling the lightning in the fire and all that. I thought that was goofy. I knew, I realized it was, most, I guess, be mostly symbolic, but then, you know, he had the whole thing, I, I own the Undertaker, I own their souls, I took a piece of their souls that they'll never get back, and then just Kane and Undertaker just walk out and beat the crap out of them. Like, like this guy's a liar. So, my opinion, Undertaker does not need to wrestle. If he does, you know, let it be a Goldberg. You know, just a big return of Goldberg. You know, maybe <laughs> kind of be, you know, doing the job there. But, I don't know. I wouldn't do Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker again. Nobody wants to see that. Unless you're to you forget how abysmal the actual match went when uh, Lesnar ended the streak. But I say no Undertaker match. Let him come out, maybe announce his retirement there. I got inducted into the Hall of Fame. If that happens, you know, I got inducted in the Hall of Fame. It's time for the spirit of The Undertaker to rest in peace. And then somebody comes out, some jobber guy, <laughs> Heath Slater, any of those guys come out. Like I said, Bo Dallas can come out and say, don't worry, Undertaker, it's okay, you just gotta believe. And then he just beats the crap out of Bo, and then he walks back up the ramp, and that's the end of The Undertaker. I mean, that's what I would do. He's already had his big last hurrah in the main event. Uh, with Brock, uh, with a big series of three, best of three with Lesnar. Lesnar came out on top. So, I mean, it, there's nothing left for The Undertaker to even do. So, just, I say just let him go. So, looking at the time, I have been talking for almost 50 minutes. It's kind of, <laughs> I didn't expect to be talking this long, but I, I like this. It's kind of a, uh, rant thing um uh, but i hope everybody uh enjoyed listening to this hopefully i'll get to do this i want to do this once a week if i can i may skip weeks if there's not really anything to talk about and hope and you know i may do some smaller episodes so uh that way you know it won't be a, a pain in the rump to uh have to listen to an hour worth of one guy talking
but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, tell me, go, give me some feedback. Give me some feedback on Twitter. Or the uh, or this is on YouTube. Leave us a comment or something. You know, if you want me to talk about certain things, or you know, get my opinion on certain things, or if you have suggestions for how to improve this show, uh, I welcome that too. Even if you might would be interested in uh, uh, coming in on the show with me and having discussions like this in the future, that's probably going to be a little bit of ways away before we do that. But I would be up for having two or three people come in, you know, or, or maybe having one or two people come in and it being two or three people when we discuss things. I think that would be fun, you know, and, and then just every week change it out or, or just something like that. Have a rotating you know, group of people come in. But just a any suggestions, I'll gladly take. And uh, I guess this will be, uh, I guess this is the end then. Going to wrap it up. So thank you for listening and look forward to the next episode whenever I can get it out. Uh, we'll start hyping up the Royal Rumble. Uh, I'm hoping I can do one more before the Rumble itself. I may just wait. I think what, the Rumble's next weekend, isn't it? Second one, third. Yeah. Rumble's next weekend. So, I may wait and actually record it the night after uh, the Rumble. I may record it during the day and before. Oh, uh, well. Thinking about that. I, I probably will wait and record it after the Rumble and after the Raw from the Rumble. So, may not have an episode next weekend. But, I definitely will... Or at least after this Raw. So, just be on the lookout for it. I'm Like I said, I want to try to get this more organized in the future. So, it's just kind of going to be what it is. You know, it's just going to... Things... It's just going to happen as it happens. So... So, um... Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time.